Good morning. In this lesson, we'll paint a Pennsylvania farm on a rainy fall day. For brushes, I'm using a size six round and a three quarter inch oval wash brush. You can add a tiny brush for the detail if you like. Start with the sky, painted wet on wet. While that dries, you can lay on your first washes of color at the bottom. The distant trees and buildings are tiny, but they're fun to paint. Last comes the finishing touches, that's reflections in the wet road, and the field with the hay bales. You can paint this, just work step by step. Visit watsonwatercolor.com for everything you need to paint beautiful watercolor realism. Before I paint the sky, I'm putting masking tape over the white part of the barn. The tape will keep the paint from going on that part of the paper. Next, I wet the sky with clean water. I want the paper evenly damp. Use a lot of water and just tilt the painting to drip off the standing water. While that soaks in, mix up a big puddle of sky blue. Cerulean, cobalt, or a watery phthalo blue work really well for skies. Load your brush drippy wet and start applying paint at the top, leaving the bottom wet but unpainted. Then mix a darker version of that color and add some to the top. You're going to get the smoothest sky if you let the water do the work. Tilt the paper to smooth out the brush strokes or areas you don't like. Now mine isn't smoothing as much as I'd like so I just keep tilting. If you do use your brush, be very gentle and make sure you dab and circle. Don't do straight brush strokes. While the sky dries, mix a little burnt sienna into some of your blue and make a gray for the road. The road is very light in color and value, so add more water if you need to lighten it. You want the road lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. You can achieve this by dabbing off some paint at the top and or adding more paint to the bottom. Next, paint the field a yellow-brown with the same kind of graded wash. Light at the top, dark at the bottom. This time I wet the top of the field with clean water to help keep it light. I painted the yellow-brown and then I added more brown to darken the bottom and right side. You can also add a touch of your blue to darken the brown even more. To make my green, I added green gold to my blue.
This is just green gold for the lighter bit. Start with the green gold color and then switch to green for the graded wash. You can also dab the top to lighten. I know getting a smooth graded wash takes some work, but it's really worth it for the effect you get in a landscape. This time, I add a little perlin green to darken and mute the color, especially at the bottom. Perlin green is a great color and it's well worth adding to your palette. While I have a little green left, paint the right side tree behind the barn Remove your tape. Don't forget to paint the bit of green beside the brown and the little bit on the other side of the road. For the barn roof, mix cobalt blue and burnt sienna for a blue gray. Paint the barn lighter on the left to darker on the right. This time, instead of dabbing color with a paper towel, I'm using a thirsty brush to lift up some of the color on the left. Also paint the stone foundation at the bottom and then dry well. Add water to the gray to make it lighter and paint the side of the barn. While the wash there is still wet, take your damp brush and do lines. That gives you the suggestions of boards. Working in a damp wash is quite a nice effect, quick and easy. So practice this on scrap paper until you learn it. Last, add a shadow under the eave. The next step is the background trees and buildings. If you aren't good at detail, just do a distant hill or mountain. Use leftover gray and paint the distant barn roof. You don't need a graded wash here. All one color is fine. Three of the tree masses will be an orangey brown. That's burnt sienna plus orange or whatever color you think is good for fall trees. If you can leave skippers in the leafy trees, it's nice but not necessary.
The second brown mass goes beside the distant farmhouse, and the third is on the bare tree in the front of the barn. To suggest leaves on a bare tree, use the side of your brush with very little paint. Dry brush on a little color. We'll add a darker value after this layer dries. Now for the three green masses. Mix a very dark green or use perlin green. Paint the biggest tree a medium dark and then dab in squiggly lines of very dark. For the rest of this spot, just vary the light and dark a little. The next tree gets medium without any of the very dark. Then switch to the other side. Do a medium at the top and dark at the bottom. Your trees don't need to look exactly like mine, but don't do too much detail in the distance. The last tree is the farthest away, so make it lighter and bluer. I'm painting around a tiny road sign, just because I love details like that. You can use a paper towel or thirsty brush to lighten up this distant tree. When the trees are dry, add a tiny red building for an accent. Distant trees need to have very thin lines, so if you can't get a thin line with your brush, just use a pencil or pen to lightly put these in. Don't draw each trunk from the bottom to the top. You want variety. Start some farther up or skip areas for more interest. At the top, dab with your finger to smudge the edges. I'm filling in between the barn and the big tree with the medium green. Now it's time to evaluate this middle area. You can decide if you want any bits darker or lighter. I'm adding more dark to the bottom and the eave of the barn. and I'm painting the sign yellow. Now's time to add the road reflections. These reflections can be light, medium, or dark values, but you want them to all go straight across horizontally 
in a squiggly fashion. I'm just copying what I see in the photograph. Also, the center line is yellow, and the line on the right is white. You can leave your field with the plain wash that's on now, or if you want to indicate furrows, do it with squiggly lines. It's up to you. I wet the top to keep it light, and start with light furrows. Build up your colors, light to dark, until you're happy with it. While that dries, mix a dark brown or gray for the tree. Be sure to bring the trunk down into the brown area in front of the barn. Don't have it setting on the line. When the field is dry, add three darker hay bales. They're the darkest on the long side, and you want the closest one to the front to be the very darkest. That dark color is perfect to spice up the tree also. Oops, almost forgot the telephone poles. Once again, use a pen or pencil if you can't get thin lines. And use a pencil to lightly suggest the wire. Well, that's about it. Remember, your paintings don't have to look like mine to be good. Every artist is different. Please give me a thumbs up if you like these videos. It really helps my channel. And happy painting!